Today we're diving into the rich world of festive bread. Let's make some Easter bread. My family's been making Easter bread for generations. My mom's been making her famous Easter bread with raisins or like cranberries, all these berries, dried berries soaked in cognac, rum, or whatever she has in stock and put into Easter bread. So today our Easter bread is going to be made with chocolate though. I don't know if my mom's going to be happy about that, <laughs> but we're making it with chocolate. Let's get to it. You're going to need two tablespoons of yeast and six ounces of lukewarm water six tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted at room temperature, six tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, four egg yolks, three and one third cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, one egg for the egg wash, one tablespoon of water for the egg wash. And for the chocolate filling, you're gonna need one and one half cups of semi-sweet dark chocolate chunks, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one fourth cup of cold unsalted butter. And the best way to actually make this recipe is really use everything by weight. We're gonna have everything in grams in the description below. You're gonna start with your milk and then you're gonna add your yeast. Your milk has to be lukewarm. And you're gonna add in your yeast and mix while you're adding so it doesn't create clumps. And you're just gonna set it aside for five minutes. While this milk and the yeast is sitting, we're gonna beat our eggs and our sugar together. We already separated our egg yolks for the next step, but first what we're gonna start with is our butter, softened butter, and our sugar, and we're gonna cream it together really well until it becomes fluffy. The best thing to use for this portion, for this creaming, for this mixing, is to use your paddle attachment. So we're gonna add that in. We're gonna add in our sugar. And we're gonna add in our butter. We're gonna mix it for about um, one to two minutes on medium speed. I'm just gonna turn this off for one second and I'm just gonna scrape the sides. So pretty much this is almost what you're looking for for this like creamy consistency before you add your egg yolks in. Right here, like look at that, yep. I think this is actually perfect, right about there. Yeah, that's nice. I'm just gonna scrape the sides, perfect. And maybe just turn it on for like one second. Just to I think it's good, it's good, it's perfect. So we're gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract into our separate bowl of egg yolks. You wanna do this first to mix it really well in there, just kinda break up the egg yolks before you add it into your butter and sugar. You go one teaspoon, I'm gonna add it in there. And we're just gonna break up the egg yolks and mix it just to get it well blended. You don't have to beat it hard. You just wanna mix it very lightly like this. And then we're gonna slowly add it into our sugar and butter mixture in four parts. So it re is really well blended. Slowly start adding it into here. We're just gonna have it on a medium speed and we're just gonna add it in slowly into our mixture. And then you're gonna wanna stop it every so often to scrape off the sides like this to get everything blended well. And then just turn it back on. Just keep mixing it. When you see the mixture well blended inside, like with the sugar and the butter, you can add in the rest of your egg mixture. That's why it's important to do it slowly so it's well blended. We're gonna turn it on medium for a little bit so it blends really well. And then we're gonna turn up our heat, our, um, our speed to high. 
Yep, I think it's good. I'm gonna turn it up now. And you're gonna let it mix for about two minutes until it becomes fluffy. This way it's gonna become fluffy, you'll see. This is the consistency you're looking for right here. It's super fluffy. Um, the butter's well mixed in there. This is what you're looking for right there, right here. We're gonna set this right back and this is where you add in your flour and your salt and your yeast and your milk, all right? This, oh, sorry. This is the most technical part. It's once you get this dough going, after that, it's super easy. All right, we're gonna set this back up. I'm just gonna add my salt into my, my flour and mix it well before I add it into my mixer. Just to blend it in there well. Yep, so in with our flour and salt. Just gonna add it, uh, add it right in there. And then we're gonna add in our um, milk and yeast mixture. And then in with our yeast and milk, just gonna mix it a little bit. Get it off. I'm gonna add it right in here. And then we're just gonna run our mixer. And we're gonna run it until our mixer, oh, I'm gonna run it really slowly first so our flour doesn't get. So you're gonna run it until your, your mixer can't handle it anymore. You'll see it's gonna become tougher and then we're gonna switch it over to the dough hook. And it's gonna look kind of funky at first, but it's, I promise you, it's gonna work. <laughs> you could <can> do it. <laughs> If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> there we go, here it goes. So this is pretty much right here. It's becoming tougher to mix. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna shut this off and we're gonna pull off all our dough mixture off the paddle and we're gonna add in our dough hook. And also you can do this all by hand too, if you want to. <laughs> My mom does this all by hand. <laughs> but yeah, you, all this is, you definitely can do it all by hand as well. But I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that, no. All right, we're gonna add our dough hook in. Just gonna mix it until it starts kind of becoming a little bit, like starts making a ball itself. And it's not sticking to the walls. I like to add a little bit of flour in here, just like when you're kneading it, just to kind of get it off the walls a little bit. Kind of will put it, be careful, don't lose your finger. But here it goes, it starts coming off the walls a little bit. Right there, there we go. That's what you're looking for right there. Just a little bit and it stops sticking to the walls. Yeah, there we go. That's what you're looking for right there. Once it stop, stops sticking to the wall and becomes this ball, you're gonna wanna let it knead for about like one to two minutes and then you can shut it off completely. I'm just so excited. <laughs> it looks so good. It smells delicious. All right, our dough is done. And what you're gonna do next is you're just gonna grab your, take off your hook, you're gonna grab your dough, and you're gonna kinda just form it into a ball a little bit like this. And this dough should feel like soft. It should be kinda springy. It should spring right back at you. Should not be tough at all. And now we're gonna just oil our pan. You're gonna set it into a pan a pot, I'm just gonna oil it a little bit with the neutral oil. And you're just gonna set your ball of dough into this bowl. And you're gonna cover it tightly with some, pl with some plastic wrap. And you're gonna set it aside for about two and a half hours to let it rise. While our dough is rising, we're gonna start with our filling. Because this part goes into the fridge, we want our chocolate to be set. So pretty much the way this is gonna work, it's gonna be fun. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I made this, I screwed up the chocolate, but it still worked out perfectly fine. Like, 
Don't worry if your chocolate doesn't look like mine. I promise you it will still work. Chocolate is chocolate. It's going to go into something amazing, good bread, and it's still going to look good and it's going to taste amazing. All right, so what you're going to want to prep with, you're going to want to have two baking dishes, uh, baking pans. You want to prep these already and you want to make sure you have parchment paper because this is where you're going to spread your chocolate on. All right, so I'm going to have my two dishes ready. I'm going to put these, my two pans and my two parchment papers. And then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our chocolate, we're going to grab our butter, and we're going to grab our cinnamon, and we're going to put it onto our stove. You're going to want to fill a pot up with water and put it on the stove and start heating it. You can add, make sure you gr uh, grab a glass um, bowl that is heat safe and you place it into your water like that. You're gonna start by heating up your bowl. This is when your chocolate will start going in. It's when your bowl is starting to slowly heat up. It's still kind of cold. I mean, you can actually, technically you can already start adding your chocolate. It's gonna heat it up either way. So you're gonna add in your chocolate. You also wanna make sure your bowl is not overflowing with water and where it's like spilling out from the sides. Just gonna add in your chocolate and just, it's, this is a, the waiting game. You're just gonna wait it out a little bit. We're gonna melt the chocolate a little bit and then we're gonna add in our butter and our cinnamon. So your chocolate is starting to melt. You're just gonna wanna just mix it a little bit. Mix it, see, we're just gonna wait it just a little bit. And then we're gonna add in our butter and our cinnamon. Just gonna let it sit just a little bit more. All right, so this is like whenever it's slowly starting to melt like this, I'm gonna add in my butter and my cinnamon. So in with the butter and then cinnamon. This is like hard for me, <laughs> this thing. I need to wear heels. It just starts melting slowly and it becomes like glossy. That's what I was talking about. Just want your bowl to be warm Nothing crazy. This is the consistency what you're looking for. A little bit thicker than peanut butter, right here. It's not supposed to be like, um, like crazy watery. Um, this is it right here. All right, we're gonna shut off. Our stove is already off and we're gonna spread it onto our baking sheets. You're gonna want to have one of these little bench scrapers, or you know what, technically you, you really don't have to, but this works best for, for this um, spreading the chocolate onto your baking sheet. So you're just gonna grab some chocolate, you're gonna start adding it into your sheet. I'm just gonna add half of this chocolate onto your one parchment paper. And then what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start slowly just spreading it out. It's gonna stick a little bit, but you just start moving it and creating a thin sheet. Cause this is, ow, that's hot. <laughs> ow, that's hot. Um, you're just gonna start creating a thin sheet cause this is what's gonna get rolled into your babka. I need to be careful. This is dangerous. I gotta add a little bit more, just a little bit more right here. Let me move. I need some, I need some, I need some movement. Just gonna, it's just a little game. You're playing a little game with the chocolate. Remember, we are amateurs. We're amateurs. We just do what works best for us. Nobody's perfect, All right? Next sheet, same thing gonna add the rest of the chocolate in onto the sheet. Here's our risen dough. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> all right. All right, our dough has risen. It shouldn't rise too much. Um, look at this. It's pretty much, wow, it's so buttery and soft. Look at that. I'm excited. I'm so excited to roll this out. The dough is pretty um, 
buttery and it has a lot of oil on it from like the bowl being buttered. You can flour your surface if you want, but I've tested it out and it doesn't really stick onto my countertop as bad, so I'm not gonna flour it, but if you want to flour your surface, you can. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dump this out. Come on, baby. Oh, that. And you're gonna start rolling it out slowly. This is my favorite rolling pin. Like, I got it from TJ Maxx. It's like some kind of Italian. I don't know if it's real Italian though. <laughs> TJ Maxx be lying. Um, it's because I have like control over like the, um, the roller it doesn't have like the attachment pieces. And like I said, my dough does not stick for some reason. It's just, it's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna keep rolling until I get my thickness. Your thickness should be about a quarter inch. You're gonna kind of form it into like a little square because you're gonna be rolling it. You're gonna be rolling it up anyways, like a cinnamon roll. Just gonna roll it out. Beautiful. So I don't know what kind of shape I just created, but <laughs> I'm just gonna cut off this, these pieces right here. So it's kind of even. I'm just gonna throw this out like that. I'm gonna push that and voila, that's it. That's my shape I'm gonna keep. Cause you know what I noticed? The last ones I made, the end was way too thick. So I didn't, this time I was like, I'm gonna make them thinner at the ends where I'm rolling. So I didn't really like that. All right, our chocolate is all hardened up. So there you go, it's like hardened. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna flip this chocolate down like this. And you're just gonna start peeling it like that. There you go. Perfect. I'm gonna do this and then wherever it's like overlapping, I'm gonna cut that off and you're just gonna like patch it up the pieces where like right here, add it in there, there. Just gonna do a little patchwork right there. I think that's pretty good. I have like these extra pieces right here that I don't have enough chocolate for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut, I, would, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna cut these pieces off. Just gonna put them in my bowl. Just gonna just cut them off. And I'm gonna start rolling. So you're just doing like a little tight roll. I'm gonna cut this off too right here. I'm gonna start tight rolling it. Like, a, like you would cinnamon rolls if you ever made them before. I'm just gonna start rolling it. I'm just gonna pinch these down a little bit, just kinda like smooth them out a little bit. I have chocolate all on my fingernails. <laughs> that doesn't look good. All right, I'm just gonna pinch them down like this and then I'm gonna turn it like this and go like that. And I think I'm just gonna chop the ends off like that as well. Same thing here. Grab our dishes already. Now this is the fun part. Do not get scared. This is where we're gonna split our roll in half. You're, this is why you kinda want to have one of these pastry cutters. Or you can use a knife as well, but this one is great because what you do, you're gonna split this roll right in half. So what you're gonna do is gonna start in the middle, you're gonna go all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Same thing here. Beautiful. There we go. I'm gonna just grab the, both of these and you're gonna turn them out. Look at that, that is so beautiful. I'm gonna turn them out. And you're gonna start slowly, kinda just weaving them back and forth like that. So I'm just gonna 
pinch the ends like this. And we're just gonna slowly start weaving these back and forth like this. Okay. And you kinda want, you're gonna want to keep the, the chocolate upright. This back and forth. Go all the way to the end like that. And then you're just gonna pinch that like that. Wow, like what in the world? You just made this. It's beautiful. I love chocolate. So we already have a, our buttered loaf pan. So we decided to do two of them. You could actually bake this entire thing in one baking dish if you like. You could like either fold it up or you can roll it into itself. But what we're, we are gonna, we decided we were gonna get these um, baking dishes from Walmart. We already buttered them up. We're gonna cut this loaf, this uh, babka in half because what? whenever we're gonna put these in here, they're gonna grow a little bit. And um, we like that idea and we wanna give some to our family. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut mine right in half. So I'm just gonna kinda measure it out. Flip it in half like this, like right about there. Cut it. I'm just gonna fold it into itself a little bit. I'm just pin pinching it a little bit and then we're gonna put them in the loaves. I'm gonna keep the chocolate upright and then same thing with this one as well. I'm gonna put them right in here. And then um, we're gonna plastic wrap these and set them aside to um, proof for another two hours, sadly. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> look amazing they risen so well they're not going to rise too much but let me just on if I can. <laughs> we're going to egg wash these before they go into the oven and the egg wash just creates this beautiful gloss on top of the um babka all right i'm just gonna break this I'm so excited for them oh. Wow, that one is pretty fat right here for that. <laughs> so excited. We're gonna share these with our family members. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if it's delicious, um, I mean, I'm gonna keep them, keep these suck. No, I'm just kidding. I gotta share the love. I can't eat all of this. Nice and washed up. Our oven is already preheated at 350. We're just gonna put them right in here for about 25 minutes. All right, oh my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. Now look at that beautifulness. I mean, That is like the chocolate stayed in. This is awesome. Like I can't even believe it. We're gonna let these cool for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and cut these open and try them out. Oh, I can't wait. It's the next day and we waited for our loaf to cool overnight before we could cut it. So here's a few things we definitely learned. I'm not gonna lie, we had to make two batches. The first time we pulled our uh, Easter bread, our babka out of the oven, it was still raw. Um, we kinda had to tweak a few things. So it was at 350, it needs to be at 350 for about 35 minutes. But the only thing, it really depends on your oven. The best way to check if your babka is, um, is baked is to have an internal temp of 135 or not 135, wow. Have an have a internal temp of 180 to 200 for it to be like actually baked, to know that it is completely baked. I checked a few spots, the main, I checked the middle and the sides and it was perfect. And 
I would definitely wait like the next day for it to like fully cook to cut into it or you can cut into it right away. It might be feel a little soggy because the chocolate does make your dough a little bit more soggy where it looks a little raw. But um, that's the one thing we learned. But today we're gonna cut into it and see how it looks. I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut into right in the middle. Yeah, definitely cuts a lot. Oh, oh yeah, that's a lot better. Um, I think it looks great. It looks a little bit overbaked. Let me cut into it one more. Like cut a slice. Oh yeah. See, that is how it's supposed to look, where it's like not too soggy. So internal temp needs to be about 180. It has to be 180. And now we gotta taste it. See if it actually, oh my God. I love, the one thing about this babka, I love that you can like peel the layers and like eat it with your coffee or your tea or milk. Let's try it out. Mmm. <laughs> Definitely buttery, super buttery and super chocolate. Let me finish mine. It's super chocolatey and very rich, very buttery, not too sweet. Surprisingly, I thought it would be like extremely sweet, but it's not. So one thing I do love, uh, what I love to put on this babka is I would cut it into slices, like even the next day, Throw it in your air fryer or um, broil it, toast it up a little bit where it's a little bit more crispy and throw like a spread a little bit of butter on it. Sounds super horrible for you. Doctors probably don't recommend that to you, but it tastes amazing. One slice definitely can't hurt you. And like you don't make this often. This is like once in a while, like literally we make this the day before Easter or a few days before Easter. So that's about it. This is like a nice little beautiful Easter bread. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure you follow us on Instagram for more behind the scenes and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys at our next video.